Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town manager here in the town of Amherst, Massachusetts. This is a recording of an informational session that will detail the process um, that residents and interested parties should use to apply for a cultural council grant. At this time, I would like to recognize the co-chair, Julian Applegate, and I will make her the host. Have a great information session. Thank you so much, Angela. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Um, and Rachel Wang, I'm so glad to have you here with me tonight. Um, you've been serving on the council almost as long as me, right? Just about how long now? Uh, three years. Great. And what, what do you appreciate most about serving on the council? I see we have uh, Pat with us. Uh, Pat, feel free to raise your hand as we go. Um, or I'm not sure if the chat's available. So, so we have one person with us right do. now. Yeah, welcome, okay. Pat. Yeah, welcome. Um, so what do I appreciate about serving on the council? Is that your question? Well, you do so much, and, and I really appreciate how generous you are with your time and insights, yeah. Well, first of all, I have to thank you for stepping up to co-chair and to provide leadership um, uh, to all of us. And um, I think when I first joined we it was right before we went into meeting remotely so i think i might have attended one in person meeting before i think you know? so i think that's yeah. what it was yeah before um everything went um virtual and i guess as a result of that um we've most of most of my experience has really been working digitally and remotely mm -hmm. and so i think that um I I miss not being able to really meet more people in person to to find out about their grants and yeah. um, or yeah. applications I should say right and their projects. But um, what I do appreciate is I guess the efficiency with which we have been working. And we, um, we need that, right? We we service almost a hundred grant applications uh, a year. I guess it's it, that's how many it was last year. Nearly that, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that's rewarding is over time um, being able to see like a more, like first of all, more grant applications coming in and then um, also a um, increasingly diverse set of projects that yeah. are requesting funding. And yeah. then also being able to work with a group of um, other volunteers um, with very different backgrounds. So yeah. For example, we have diversity in age, in um, experience, mm -hmm. and um, origins, I suppose, as well. And, you know, our respective um, fields of interest are yeah. be quite different, too, between, you know, like what you do as a designer and what I do as a, an educator of visual arts and um, um, promoting cross-cultural understanding yeah. and communications yeah so, and just, just so yeah. pat and whomever might be catching this on the the replay later can understand um who we are and what our mission is um we are appointed by the town government as the cultural council but we're also part of the massachusetts um the mcc right and the MCC has LCCs in over 350 cities and towns in Massachusetts, where our main purpose is not just to promote culture, but we receive um, a portion of the state lottery funds. And our nine member council, that's the largest it can be, I think we're one shy at the moment, um, reviews the grant applications annually and allocates those funds throughout the community. Um, so it's it's an exciting and busy time for us coming up because uh, the grant site um, application portal is open to everyone through October 17th. And when that, that closes, then we have a pretty fast paced um, review process um, that ends up with us uh, deciding and voting in time to get the word out early in the new year to all the grantees um, for those that are approved for the awards. 
So um, we, we will know if somebody has a question, right? It's yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking to see if any if any hands okay. are, are raised. So I guess I'm going to uh, attempt to share my screen. I'm not a daily Zoom user. So um, I'm going to just kind of start with where you can find information about us and the MCC. So I'm over here um, at amherstma.gov. And I navigated basically from your government into boards and committees, A through M. And here I was able to, you can come here and then um, select the cultural council. For folks applying for grants, there's really some, some fantastic information here. It's, um, uh, so let me just kind of take, take you through that one of the things you can see is our prior grant cycle. So if you're wondering what kinds of um, events and groups we funded last year or what's an, an appropriate amount to request, it's really good to kind of come through here um, and, and look at uh, maybe events that you attended um, to, to understand uh, what kinds of uh, opportunities are, are, are generally possible. And there's also here, you can see who our council members are. We, um, most of us serve a, an initial three-year term, and then we have the opportunity to extend for an additional three years. Uh, I'd have to look at the chart to say where I am, but yeah, I started in 2019. Um, so uh, it's been just fantastic. We would love for everyone to please complete our community survey. Um, one of our uh, responsibilities to the community in Amherst is to ensure that we're providing meaningful arts and culture um, events. And But we also want to do that with an eye to what's important to the community. What are they asking for? And this is you know, a direct way for yourself and please spread the word about this um, uh, to others that you know so that they, they can um, directly inform us uh, as to what's important. You can see it's just five questions here uh, and there's a link to share it, I believe at the end of that too. So um, there's, uh, this video here, that's a little bit of an overview about our process. And then um, really exciting, you can click here to be able to go and actually apply. Um, so I'm also going to show you how to get here just in general. So if you were to just search for the mass cultural, it's been a long day. And the reason I'm going through here so you can see all of this is there are lots of opportunities um, throughout the year that, you know, beyond our own grant cycle and, and folks should just be educated and know that that's, that's uh, this entire site is here. Um, but specifically, we're part of the local cultural councils, right? And like, for instance, Hadley has their own cultural council, Shutesbury does, Shelburne Fall does, you know, all of these different towns have uh, their, their own local groups that receive their own funding. And with this, um, you can find your specific, you find your LCC, right? And all of these different towns. This is really important because if you're having a larger regional event, uh, and you're going to provide public benefit to um, many different communities, then it's appropriate to apply uh, to all of those communities in that case, right? And the, the, the process should be fairly similar, although there are differences. I'm going to point some of these out. So um, one thing that's really important to read, and this is what will, would be different from cultural council to cultural council. I'm sorry, just a moment. 
I need to mute just a moment. All right, disaster averted for the moment. <laughs> uh, so I was saying that uh, when you go to each different cultural council, their local priorities, which are the guidelines by which uh, these councils are determining um, public benefit and whether it meets all of the requirements would be different. So you wanna pay special uh, attention to everything here and specifically for our uh, local priorities. Um, we are definitely prioritizing grants so that they'll be um, diverse and, and serve our diverse community. Um, every uh, event must be ADA compliant and accessible, and it must be open to the public. And you can read through in, in more detail. We also try to ensure that they're all, you know, different kinds of art, that it's, that there's music, but not just one kind of music, just different um, varieties that, that people like. And we try to make sure that's happening throughout the year. So, uh, and I think I said everything has to be accessible to the public. I guess one big thing that comes up year in, year out um, is that there are a few things that we simply cannot fund. We cannot fund any travel transportation or lodging expenses. Um, and we cannot fund any kind of food, beverage and refreshment. That That is something um, that you may very well have at your event, but you'll just have to consider that that's something that the, the funds that we provide can't go towards that. Um, I'm gonna stop because I can't see while I'm sharing to see if anybody has questions, so. Um, I'm just familiarizing myself here with Zoom. Rachel, do you have anything to, to add just yet? Um, not at this moment. So Julian, we are um, at two participants right now. Is that That's you and I? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. Okay. 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 So I guess um, just kind of uh, breezing through then, um, we can move on to where grantees would click apply now. And you'll have to create an account. Um, so you'd have to go in and register as an individual or, or an organization. Um, so we're registering here. Don't know if I'm already in here, but I hope I'm not. This one. Any any thoughts as I'm as I'm <laughs> just typing here? Yeah, I think what I was gonna say is related to the applications themselves. I think that um, obviously the more detailed information we have with regard to the project, uh, yeah. not only the description, but also the implementation um, would help us, you know, decide or determine whether um, the feasibility and, you know, the scale just, just give us a better understanding as we're um, making our deliberations. And the other thing I was going to say is that I, I feel like um, for the applicants who can demonstrate they've done so, um, a fair bit of the background research preparation already. They tend mm -hmm. to, you know, um, help us understand what it is that they like to do. And it's easier to, mm -hmm. to make a decision based on the more, I guess, evidence or examples or tangible um, framework that might already exist. That's, that's that's a great point. I mean, just to add on with that, like I said, it was almost a hundred grant applications last year. Um, so really we pretty much just have to take the grant application as it comes to us and either 
the information is there that it meets our requirements or or not because there just isn't much time for the volume of applications that we're going through to to clarify details. Uh, so it, it is really important to be sure that um, truly the the spirit of of the uh, event that you're trying to share is comes through as well as the details. Um, so some, some, you know, we, we have to have a date when the event is happening. Uh, there has to be a location and that location needs to be accessible. Uh, the location, if it's being hosted um, uh, at, a, at a site that you're securing, we need a letter of support um, with the date and the time from the host location uh, that everything is set up. And, you know, why is that? Well, there's there's no point in having events that don't happen. And for events to happen and be open to the public and accessible, then they have to happen somewhere. So having all of those pieces together uh, in your application is really, really crucial to um, our, our review process, along with understanding, you know, who are the artists um, that that will be participating, what their credentials are, lots of uh, just to to give the council members a very clear idea of why this has meaning and benefit uh, in the community. Yeah, yes, thank you. And right. And I think by saying that we're not asking people to submit reams and reams of, well, I guess oh, no, they're not allowed digitally, to actually. right? Digitally, anyway, there is no dreams <laughs> of, of anything because I know we have like maximum ten pages of supporting documentation. Yeah. I guess the, the 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 point that um you know you've already made is to make sure that we know there's already um you know certain uh, pieces of it in place. So, like mm -hmm. you said, the venue and the date, and then the other thing too is that if um the applicant is planning to collaborate with other organizations or individuals or, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have all of that information available too. And um, that type of, I think, supporting details um, would be valuable for us to. Absolutely. To right. And so, that, that yeah. brings up um, a question that happens all the time. So uh, when you're talking about someone who's applying, um, and they'll have others participating with them, or maybe it's more than one organization um, that's that they're doing a joint um, event. And we we love all of that. Uh, but the kind of the the rule is basically that, you know, each organization can only apply once and each individual can only apply once. Um, but it's it's fine. So let's say um, who should we talk about here? Um, let's say we have uh, I don't know gallery A three, right? And this is all just theoretical, right? Just I'm making this stuff up. And they're going to collaborate um, with uh, to to have an art show at the Drake. And there are going to be musicians and I don't know poetry reading. So the the key thing here is somebody out of all of those groups has to take the lead and own this particular grant. Um, and then that person and organization would not be able to apply for another grant. But you can have supporting um, members from all of these groups come in and work together, but only one group can own and administer. The grant, um, or another example might be. I know a lot of you catch um, different kinds of events and performances uh, at the Jones Library. Uh, so if if we have someone who's coming in, maybe and and uh, doing children's songs and stories, uh, if if they're doing uh, five events at the Jones and then another um, three spread out at the schools, that person when they're applying needs to apply for like their whole grant season collectively in their one application uh, because they can't apply 
you know, for each different one, we kind of have to take the the whole opportunity for the grant season for that particular person. So I'm just at the moment um, going through and just putting some things in here so we can go through. And of course we want the, the newsletter. I know nobody wants newsletters, but really, um, the number of different kind of grant programs that come out. This is how the MCC keeps all of us up to date. And, um, you know, if you don't know, you can't apply. So there, there could be something that's applicable for you. That's applicable for, for someone, you know, um, so it's always good to, uh, to, to stay in the loop with that. Now that I've made this account, I need to go and actually verify <laughs> just just, I will, I've stopped sharing, right? Let me go get my email. Yes, you're not sharing anymore. So we have two participants with us. Great. Now. And um, so if they have questions, we they can just raise their hand. Is that how it works? Or type it into a- So yes, yeah. Okay, and I am going to be coming back over- Okay, so please feel free to raise your hand or ask a question if there is one at this point. We're looking forward to receiving the applications within the coming two weeks, right? Two or three weeks. Yeah, the, the uh, grants application portal closes on October 17th. And I would certainly uh, recommend that everybody, you know, if you're a procrastinator, and I, I know I am, um, just to be honest, don't, don't wait till, you know, 11 35 PM, you know, uh, it's, it's important to just because sometimes a technical glitch or something comes up. So you're able to start your grants, uh, right now and, um, partially complete them. So you can have a draft version of your grant. And I would really encourage people to, to do that and to work through the process because you don't know what you don't know until you don't, you know, right. As you're going through. So, you know, inevitably questions are going to come up and you certainly can reach out to us at the council and we will uh, get back to you and clarify. Uh, but, but for you to have those questions, you really have to start kind of putting the details in uh, and, and then we can help you. So welcome. Welcome, Sophie. Glad you're here. And we have Pat. So, all right, I am still kind of fumbling my way through as I'll come back and share. And one of one of the reasons I'm taking the time to fr frankly do a, this slightly boring thing to kind of like look at the application is um, it's, it's just so important to be able to see uh, exactly the information that's needed. And I'm gonna try to just go through and, uh, and explain why that would be needed. So if I go to the, I guess this is the home. So, I, so see, I'm lost already as I'm winging it <laughs> I, because I've started. I, let me make sure I'm in the, this is the new one that I just made. Okay. So this is something quite different. Yeah. I wonder if you, clicked on the link to say well though once you have an account you should be able to apply to yeah I thought I thought it was in progress with that one you know because I started filling it in apply okay apply to a local cultural council hmm I wonder if I go back here. My co-chair, Matt, is so much better at this. He has a session that's recorded as well, where I'm sure he was able to go right into that. Have you gone, gone through to try to do this before, Rachel? Not 
as an applicant, but there you are, right? You, okay. You've done the Amherst. Yeah. So you got the, the okay, so should I go back and point out what I needed to do? <laughs> Cause it wasn't you, obvious to me. I was just clicking around. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So what I needed to do was click on apply to a local cultural council. And this is what I was saying earlier, where if you have an event that's going to have regional benefit, you really should go and apply um, for all the communities that, that will benefit from your event. Um, so then we are applying to Amherst, okay? So this eligibility page is really important as far as, you know, you just need to kind of go through here and and answer these honestly, but it's, it's gonna kind of do a self check as to whether um, your particular event uh, based on this criteria meets, uh, uh, is, you know, can be considered for one of our, our local cultural council grant awards. Um, so, um, just honestly going through all of this. So again, must be open to the public and accessible to folks with disabilities. There's uh, some great information uh, at, at the MCC and also on our AmherstMA.gov page uh, about our work um, to assure um, people with disabilities can uh, attend the events. I'll point out again, we cannot uh, have any of the grant funds from our LCC uh, be used to purchase food or refreshment. So, and um, so now I can go ahead here and say save draft. And if I had selected something here where there was an issue, um, it would it would raise a red flag. Okay, so the eligibility piece is there. And then it's going to point you back to the guidelines. So this is, is very important to read through uh, the Amherst guidelines, which uh, are here, but also at uh, amherstma.gov and reach out if you have any questions at all about that before you get into the application. Okay, uh, so now we can go ahead And they want you to verify. And this is this is really, truly important that we have the right information as far as emails, um, a contact phone number, and your location. Um, your location's important because when you get your grant, we have a, a direct grant award process, but the you know, the uh, grant will be mailed to you. There's some more paperwork that happens uh, just before the grant goes out. But, you know, certainly if if you're getting an award, you want it to get, get to you. And if we have any questions about it, uh, please keep your information up to date with us. So now you can see that um, we have these, these sections here, which is really where you're going to start putting in all the information about your, your grant. So... There's the amount that you're requesting. There are several categories here um, to give us an idea of, of, of what the focus of this event is. You have to pick one. Sometimes uh, events are, are multiple different disciplines and that's wonderful, but you have to kind of lead with one. Um, and uh, your project title. And again, uh, we need to have uh, a date and a time. I can't. <laughs> I don't usually have to like type as performance art. Uh, the date that it takes place. Okay, this this is kind of a, a fun and interesting thing. So the 2024 grant cycle, right? The awards will go out in early January, but they run, um, they're able to uh, apply to events from July 1, 2023 through to December 31st, 2024. So if anyone 
is in the situation um, that you want to apply for a 2024 grant for something that's happening in the second half of 2023, uh, you, you can do that as well as apply for events happening from January 1 to December 31st of 2024, okay? So what you're saying is that in theory, someone could apply for funding for something that they have already done or are in the process of doing. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. So because yep. it's a really great opportunity if someone wasn't able to um, come in and, and do the grant during 2023, then uh, you, you can apply for that now. Um, this isn't a right or wrong answer. This is just information for for us as far as if it if it primarily ser serves school children or not. Um, we we do fund any number of of grants annually that that benefit the school children because you know they're the the future of our arts and culture in the community. So they're it's a worthy investment always. Um, yeah. So just a couple of, sorry, can I just jump yeah. in for one second? Yeah. Because when you were talking about the um, estimated number served and whether or not the project primarily serves K-12 children is that I think um, whatever information is available in the applications that would help us actually see the public benefit or the potential public benefit, because mm -hmm. I think that's a piece that's always um an important factor, right? And then um, how that is presented or justified, um, you know, that explanation or projection would be would be really helpful for us as well. Yes, absolutely. And and I'm glad you brought that up because you know, um, you and I were we're so used to this after going through and reading so many of these grants, but this is all kind of strange and new to so many people, especially the first time they they apply. And, you know, there's a lot that's kind of left up to, to interpretation. So the number of people served um, generally means kind of like what the audience size will be if, if, if that's uh, appropriate, but it also can, can include uh, the artists that are participating. So I, I kind of think of it as larger because the the folks that are producing the event are benefiting from that that culture and the the, the folks that are attending uh, for a performance or you know would, would in whatever capacity they're also. So this can be in some cases a small number, a large large number, but think of all of the people who uh, who mutually benefit from from the event together. okay? Uh, so this summarized the proposed project or program. This is definitely one of the most important areas, um, I would say, uh, in, in the entire application, uh, as well as who is the target audience? You know, so we, we want to know, um, who you believe will be benefiting from this, because we really do look at this very much from a, a, a public benefit point of view. And cost of participation. So that that would be for for an event um, if there's a ticket cost to come in. Uh, and we have events that are are totally free. But you know, art and culture, uh, it, it's that's it's not always possible to to do that. You know, there's a certain uh, level of quality of event that certainly people are happy to pay for. There are some organizations who have paid events who might offset for, for need or set aside so many um, tickets for, for people um, to be able to attend if they can't pay the full price or reduced. You know, there are lots of ways to do it. I would encourage you to, to think about that, but there's nothing wrong with getting paid for your, your work and your passion. Um but it, it is something that's very important for us to understand as far as the public benefit as to who will be able to participate uh, and how open it will be. And uh, then you can, then we ask very specifically to tell us about, you know, what the public benefit will be um, for groups that are applying to Amherst where uh, we're really looking specifically for how this will be beneficial to Amherst residents. So uh, if, if this is something that's 
occurring in the larger regional area, you know, please make it clear to us as to um, how many folks from Amherst will be uh, uh, able to attend, you know, as far as what you would anticipate. And this is also where, again, you can apply to other cultural councils if you are going to provide public benefit to, to those areas too. And uh, this question here about the qualifications of the artist, humanist, scientist, you know, this really helps us understand really the quality level uh, and who's, who's committed um, to participating with you. Um, and, you know, project planners, partners, collaborators, uh, this is, is very key. So we know just how, how big it is, but also frankly, you know, we do want to get a sense for um, how logistically, how well organized it is, you know, um, these events often do take a lot of work and, you know, you certainly would want to be crediting and recognizing the folks that are, are planning it and, and are the muscle behind actually make, making everything come together, uh, on that, that actual day that it happens. There's a lot, a long lead time, as we all know, for, for most events. And, um, how are you planning to promote the project? You know, this is a, an area where I would encourage people to be pretty, pretty detailed um, because again, to have public benefit, the public has to know. Um, so what your marketing strategy is, is going to be important to the council. Any, any questions, Rachel, can you see if hands are raised the way you're viewing? Um, I can raise my own hand, but I can't, see okay, if right. somebody else is raising okay so because okay. we well, I, I think I, who else is there i think yeah. we can hear the host okay so. so um again if anybody would like to raise their hand ask a question um you're, you're welcome to do so this is a public session and really as you were saying earlier rachel normally we, we would do this or years ago before the pandemic we would have done this in person and i look forward to getting back to that but it, it really should be a much more social type of chat here. So don't be shy. And it's um, okay. While we're waiting for some questions to come up, Julianne, do you wanna talk a little bit about kind of our, um, the council's support of um, events or specific measures or um, within events or activities um, that are targeted um, for to, to, to enable accessibility? Uh, I, I think I think with that, um, because there's still quite a bit to to get through here. Okay. I I think what I'm I'm just going to go back to. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were going to continue with the. Okay, go ahead. Well, there there is a bit to kind of go through, but uh, if you go back over to our page here, um, with the town, you can see that we had uh, an accessibility webinar, um, where we invited um folks from the MCC for a round table to talk about how uh, we can meaningfully make events uh, accessible. So uh, this this is a, a, a great discussion that we had here. There are additional resource, resources here too. Um, and what we're what we're looking for um, with this, I'd say specific in the applications is for some forethought from uh, grant applicants to to be able to express you know who their audience who they anticipate anticipate the participants and audience to be and that they've thought of me meaningfully you know making sure that uh, everyone can can participate and again you know we're happy to um, to talk with anyone if you have any questions as you go please please reach out. Uh, although I guess one of the things with Charles Baldwin, when we did the, this round table that I remember saying, you know, him saying was, okay, it's great to have a sign language interpreter. Um, but if, if you end up with a very small event and there's, there's no one with that disability, then, you know, you, you can't, uh, make something accessible for someone who's, who's, who, you know, doesn't isn't receiving benefit because this this isn't you know they weren't there so it's 
there's there's a lot of unknown there, right? And uh, I guess you know how how would one know whether it's needed or not? Um, but I don't have all the answers, Rachel. I'd I'd love for you to add some more there as far as um, you know, what Charles had said and and how we can. I think it's just being thoughtful, right? Yes, I think I think some some proposed projects will probably lend themselves more to um, the capability of incorporating that kind of uh, planning into the, mm -hmm. is, the, you know, it's integrated into the planning to way we might approach um, how the project is set up in the first place. Some projects mm -hmm. can work like that, but not all, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I think, mm -hmm. I think it was just, I didn't mean to take you out of the flow of your presentation. Excuse oh, me. it wasn't flowing. Um, right now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and, so I think, I think it's more like um, if people are um, because, you know, often events will request um, people who may require accommodation to be in contact with the organizers how are, yeah. you know, in, in advance yeah. so that the appropriate accommodations can be made. But I think when we're talking about accessible, um, we're, we're primarily talking about venues being accessible, right, for. Well, for yeah, people. yeah. So the, and, the, the yeah. base level, which really, you know, your event either does or doesn't meet the guidelines is is just ADA accessibility. Um, any any location that is not ADA accessible that pretty much dis disqualifies. We're not able to to make that grant. Right, and in 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 some ways, one can argue that um, virtual events, if we're still going to be um, you know accepting those applications, may lend themselves in some respects to be more like you know it's 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 more straightforward to plan for accessibility when it's a virtual event as well. So, And yet one of the reasons that our council members became so invested and wanted to, and really kind of stepped up to make this a focus area was because of virtual events during the pandemic. And um, we just had all of these questions. Well, okay, now that it's not in the physical space, you know, are, are how are people uh, with disabilities, you know, maybe being excluded because, because it's online, you know, for for people who can't see or can't hear and and you know, there's just less less information all around for anybody as it goes virtual. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, no no simple um, ways to to address these things, but we're looking for people to understand how their their um, performances can be enjoyed by a broad audience and that everyone can can be included. Okay, I'm gonna pop back over just make sure um, if there are any any questions. Uh, yes, we've got a hand raised from Sophie. I will un unmute you. It's a, kind of funny to be so official. Hey, Sophie. Hi there. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Great. It looks. I don't know if I have video capacity or not, but it's nice to be here. Thank you so much for holding this. Absolutely. Um, Glad you okay. could make it. Yes, you're welcome. Um, so I have two two questions um, that are coming up so far. Um, I have applied to grants in the past, but I'm new to the area, so I'm I'm new. Um, uh, I have not applied to any Amherst or or surrounding um, grants. Okay. So the two questions that are coming up for me um, about this particular opportunity. The first is about. Um, Basically, if you have advice around scaling up versus down in the application, so for a little bit of context, I'm a I'm a musician. I have uh, launched in in Portland, Oregon, where I lived before, uh, multiple concerts that sometimes they were standalone shows, and then sometimes they were kind of like a full concert series. And yeah. when I applied to one. One of the grants I applied to and did receive was a you know bigger one, so it was about 10k, um, and it was for a whole season of of six different concerts, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I I but I thought really hard about it when applying to this grant if if I should just do it for you know one show or three shows or full you mm -hmm. know and I decided to go go all the way with with that one, but I I, I feel like it with with a situation like this. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious if you have advice verse about how how small versus how big. So if I have in my mind, right, that I'm gonna be 
hosting something like six shows throughout the calendar year. Mm -hmm. Would you advise that I wrote a grant application for one or two of the shows, um, for three, for all of them, you know, like basically just to be, um, I, I'm curious if, if, what your yeah. take is on that, like how, so to, to, should I, should I scale up versus scale down? And then, um, in kind of in, in combination with that, the question about applying to multiple grants uh, mm -hmm. comes up for me because you did say, so say I have a concert series, one of the shows will be, you know, I just played at Amherst College. So maybe one of the shows will be at Amherst College. One of them, I work at UMass. So what maybe mm -hmm. one will be at UMass, but maybe one will be in Northampton and one will yep. be in Hadley. So like, yeah. would, would it make sense? I'm wondering, does it feel favorable or kind of hectic to have multiple grant applications in for one project you know is that get does that muddy the waters or um or would you say basically go for as many as you can you know is there a or is there is there a sweet spot in that <laughs> all right let me let me see if i can there kind of take this from a couple different angles so you know the the one one piece is the the more you add in then the having the dates fully lined up, the locations lined up, letters of supports for all those dates, you know, yes. um, that, that part right there might be a little cumbersome. Well, um, and maybe even prohibitive, frankly, because getting all that lined up um, in the next two weeks probably will not happen. Exactly. So, you know, I would, I would definitely look at, you know, what you can communicate um, as, as something that's a, a real, clear yes this is lined up opportunity okay um, now now with that could you have five events um with you know two of them being in amherst and three of them being in the surrounding area you know northampton and you know south hadley absolutely um okay. but with that you know our council's going to look at oh okay this artist so is it reasonable that people from Amherst love you so much that they're going to see you here in Amherst and there? And generally the answer is, is yes. Now, you know, where geography might come into it a little differently is, I don't know if, if we've got someone um, who's applying for, you know, something in the, in the, like, I don't know, in the middle of winter, way on the other side of a mountain, three hours yeah. away. Right. Yes. Yes. You know, yeah, it's and it might be, you know, where we're going. I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to make a six o'clock show on, you know, you know, way out in the Berkshires, um, even though. Right. So there, there are those kinds of considerations. Now, yeah. you you certainly can apply for several events together and have several different um, cultural councils on it. But in some cases, it might be stronger um to apply within the particular council you know that has the most nexus for that occurring yes. but still we, we fund stuff in northampton south hadley um selburn falls you know all of right. these places um as as well i like that so maybe the angle is you know as part of the, the two to this particular grant i would apply and just say you know this this concert will be a part of a a bigger concert se a series of shows but um yeah. looking and just for funding for one particular or two particular shows that would be um yeah that 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 yeah. i might be able to line up more of the details um for right now and um but i want to point us towards the the budget part here yes because yes. this this is really central to what what you're asking about too so yes we have many, many of our grants that are partially funded. Like I said, we had almost a hundred come in last year. You can see our allocation amount um, this year is 58,000. Okay. Um, so we, it, it is actually a strength in your budget to put the entire budget for everything you're doing, right? Yeah. All of the expenses, Yes. Uh, if you are selling tickets that, you know, part of this is going to be paid for by tickets. Um, if, if you are anticipating, um, grants from other LCCs or other, other, uh, granting groups entirely, you know, uh, the in-kind, um, 
contributions that people are mm-hmm. making. So that's really, you know, with some of these events that are regional, a little larger, that's really going to help us understand, you know, how much support you're asking, you know, our LCC for, even if, if you're asking five LCCs, you know, you should have some concept of, you know, other LCCs, you know, anticipated X, Y, Z, whether you get it or not, who knows, but at least, you know, there's the, the effort and the intent there. Right. Yes. Um, because it's, it's often unlikely that we, we would actually fully fund any particular grant, although we do at times. Um, so we, we do like to see that there is kind of a larger plan um, to be, to be sure that it's well-funded and supported. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. And just to circle back to another guideline that's, that's, um, I think maybe you weren't here when we talked about this to start is because an individual and organization can only apply for one grant with us a year. Yes. um, You do have to be organized if you're really looking uh, for, for multiple events. You know, we've, it, it's it's been hard over over the past years you know you'll see someone who's doing you know great work and if they had just put that they're doing two events in the one grant they really mm. got money um and this uh-huh. might just be a small stipend but because of the way that they came in in two different grants you know yeah it, we it, it has to be organized got it so to clarify on that front um i do have I have two different concepts I'm dreaming about. And just, just I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, um, just one application can be made to to the Amherst LCC per, per year. Correct. Um, yeah. So I need to choose one of those projects yes. uh, and really flesh it out for you. And um, so, and would wait till- But does it next... have to be one project? Yes. Unless, I mean, it, it can be- I guess if you're, I don't know, if you're saying that you're applying for one well, thing, it's like a visual artist and another thing is a poet, and yeah, yeah. they're going to have no, nothing to do with two, each other. I don't know. Two, two different concepts, basically a slightly different concepts. So I have a collaborative concert series that could be a, um, based fully on kind of a, a concept of connection and, and community, like so mm-hmm. a, a very strong community outreach programs. And mm-hmm. then there's a different concept, which is um, a program completely uh, dedicated to um, representing female composers. Um, so those are just, you know, they're different. And again, they're both of these, both of these would have multiple um, collaborators and probably more mm-hmm. than one show you know a, a small series but i would want to choose either i think it sounds like you know either um when i'm writing my grant application really focus on a, a series of shows you know, even w- one or two shows whatever um centered around female composers versus um a few shows centered around this kind of community connection uh collaboration mm-hmm. component yeah so i also think it's important that people only take on as many events as they can actually fully take care of. But let's say, you know, some of the, the, one of, one of these where you would have a collaborator, right? If you have someone that you're working with and collaborating with in, in a way where they um, are, are dedicating the time and have the expert expertise um, and experience to, to be the lead on that application with you in support, that's allowed. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. Great. And I appreciate, (laughs) well, I I appreciate you keep you reining me in because I, I can sometimes my, my eyes are, are, (laughs) I I have the capacity to put a lot together, but this is, it it is really a good reminder that it doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't need to be overly ambitious. (laughs) Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this as well, because you know, for events to provide public benefit, they have to be feasible. They have to happen. Yeah. They have to yeah. happen as yes. intended. Um, yes. So, you know, this next um, entry here for the application, how will you adjust the project if we cannot fully fund you? You know, yes. Yes. something. And uh, that that's, it, we need to understand, you know, what, what could be scaled back, um, or sometimes it's a matter of um, 
it would be possible to change the budget so that um, uh, someone's doing something in kind or uh, change, you know, possibly change the venue, although that that's a little difficult. But just what are your thoughts? You know, uh, is, is there another group that you can go to for funding? Yes. Um, and things like that will help yes. us understand. Great. All right. Really appreciate it. I'm going to mute myself again. Um, okay. You thank can... you for the question. And don't hesitate yeah. to ask another. Okay, um, great. And then this, this next question here, truly, if you are doing something with regional benefit to other, other areas, um, it, it is good to see that uh, you've asked them for support as well. Uh, but certainly if it's truly an all Amherst uh, event, then uh, we love all Amherst events clearly too. And uh, now we are in the uh, additional materials. Uh, this is where um, you can bring in items um, and there is a limit to the total volume of paper. We have moved to a digital format, but even digitally our PDFs, uh, I think run, I don't know, Rachel, is it 600 or more pages? We used to- Oh, for the panel book, yes. Maybe longer, yeah. Um, we used to actually have all these materials printed. We'd have to go um, to a special binder um, uh, service because the books would be about this thick and the council members would, would lug those around. Um, Thankfully, everybody's been willing to go digital with it, but it, it really is an enormous document. So uh, you have the ability to add three additional pages um, with, with multiple PDFs and you have to combine those down. But this is where uh, you can have CVs uh, for the artists. Um, uh, there should be always a, a letter of confirmation from the venue. Uh, and perhaps examples of of what uh, the community can can expect to enjoy with you. And uh, so then we would get here to the final page with the acknowledgement. Um, and you can read through all of that and agree. But the thing I'm going to point out here that I think is most important is save draft. So, Again, as soon as everybody can start kind of working through this um, and start trying to plug in the information about your grant and having those questions pop up because you didn't know what that meant till you looked at it, right? Um, then you can then reach out and uh, we are more than happy to help you. And our direct email, I, don't, I hope it's here. Yeah, I think if you click here for email, nope, that's something for work. Um, I don't know what I'm sharing at this point. Uh, You're on our website. I'm, web am, am I back on the website? It popped somewhere yeah, the else. the ACC webpage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let us see. Well, it should be there. I will check with Angela to make sure that we but that does link to, to our email after all. Okay. And I believe that is all that I, uh, I have to share. So, uh, any, any other questions? Rachel, do you have any, anything to add? I think we've gone into quite a lot of it, certainly not all of it, but quite a lot. Well, I think you've covered everything that I can think of for now. Um, yeah, thank you for the great question, Sophie. Did you have another question or did you, did you ask both of them already? I thought you said you had two questions, but obviously you've answered them. I kind of merged them both into one. Both, okay. It was about how to big to scale and then a question around um, if I should apply to multiple grants at once. Okay. So, and now I have a crying baby. My apology. Oh, poor baby. Oh, Okay, so I wants her mama back. <laughs> I am going to um just go back into the application, and I've got a place there where I can put the email address on the screen. So let me. Are we seeing my screen? Yes, we are. I see the chair. Okay. Dot, 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 chair. 
yeah. dot of dot Amherst dot cultural dot council at gmail.com uh, gets to uh, myself and my co-chair Matt Holloway. And um, we keep an eye out for, especially during these next couple of weeks, there will be a flurry of uh, questions coming in and we will we'll do our best. We are an all volunteer organization. Um, and uh, at this point, yeah, all of us are, you know, have full-time jobs, uh, although a couple are full-time students at the college is also with jobs in addition. So um, like I said, you know, we do process a, a pretty large volume of grants each year. So please be patient with us. If it's not an instantaneous response, uh, we will get your message and um, we will we will connect with you and get back to you uh, as just as soon as we can. So um, I believe that is is all there is for now. And, and uh, please reach out to us as you go. And we're really looking forward to um, to, to seeing what all of the artists and uh, cultural groups have planned for the community this upcoming year. It's always exciting to be in the know ahead of time um, and, and uh, really, really glad to be able to be part of this and to get to serve with you, Rachel, and all the other council members. Thank you. I look forward to um, receiving and reading all the applications as well. Julia, I just looked at that um, website page again. Our, um, the chair the email address you just mentioned it's, it's not on there. So I think maybe we can add that um, somewhere. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to check with Angela. So I'm glad I got it in here at the end of the recording, but I know the email comes to me constantly, right? right? So um, I'm just not and sure. It's, um, and it's, I think, yeah, I was going to say it's, is it linked in the survey? Um, but the survey has the- Oh, it is in the survey too. Yeah, yeah. so we should go back to talking about, please fill in the survey, absolutely. Yes. Please do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually going to go and share the link. Well, can you do that here, or you can't. We don't have to. No, chat. I can't. But I can put it up on screen as to where people need to go and find it. So I'm just going to point you back to um, here at AmherstMass.gov when you go for the your government boards and committees, cultural council. This has quite a bit of information about us. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We usually try. Uh, to have folks post uh, upcoming events there. Uh, but yeah, there is our survey here that will help to guide us so that you can tell us um, what you want. And, and we can be sure to keep that in mind as we are planning um, the awards for the upcoming year. So, okay. I really appreciate you making the time, Rachel. Thanks for the great question, Sophie. I hope everyone on who catches this on the replay uh, on the video will reach out as well as they go. And um, good luck. And uh, we look forward to sending out the approvals early in January. Have a wonderful evening. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you so much again. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Thanks again. Take care. Bye. Bye.